live and pre-recorded. This is the Red Ticket Blues Podcast. I am Brian Buckley. This is being recorded on 91919. I heard someone say that at work today, and it was so interesting. Uh, it will hit the internet September 20th, 2019. I almost forgot what month it is. This is the show, huh? You can listen to me on uh, iTunes, TuneIn Radio, Stitcher, Google Play, YouTube. Uh, follow me on Twitter at BrianBuck13 at Red Ticket Blues. So I've always said, this isn't true, but I've always said that I want to be honest to the audience, the people that listen to me. You know, I I, I want to make sure that I'm, I'm not one of these shows that just says crazy shit, you know? I want it to be honest when these words come out of my mouth. I want you to make sure you believe in what I'm saying. So I'm going to say something right now. So get ready. And I feel like I just, I can't let it fester inside me anymore. I want to wear blackface. I want to wear blackface all the time. And you know what? I want to wear blackface and brown face to the point that I don't even remember how many times I wore it. I, it's, it, it's, it's like someone saying, Hey, do you, uh, <laughs> how many times you brush your teeth ever? Yeah. Ever. I don't know. <laughs> Who doesn't answer that question? I want to be like that about blackface. <laughs> It's where we are, people. President of a country now. Doesn't know how many times he wore blackface. <laughs> we'll get to that in a little bit, Mr. Trudeau. The darling of, of everyone, yet he's really not that great, but he certainly is handsome. Now he wears dark <laughs> now he wears blackface. I just said, listen, I'd like to be transparent with the audience. I want to wear blackface. Anyways, my brother actually texted me that today. He's like, I have just an urge to wear black. Obviously, this is all in 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 jest. No one wants to wear blackface. What did he say? Uh, I want to wear blackface <laughs> and then post it on the internet. I said, it's brownface for Trudeau. And he said, every day I wake up and fight the urge to put on black slash brownface. Listen, the Buckley boys, I mean, we're, we're brothers for a reason. Am I right? So here we are. <laughs> I want to wear blackface. Fuck, come on. Uh, what do we have to talk about? We got a few things to talk about today. You know, my parents were just in town. I think they enjoyed themselves. Took them all over, you know, and a big, big pink Cadillac brought them everywhere. No, 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 Toyota Camry, but I think they enjoyed themselves. I think they enjoyed California. So, uh, right now, I am just r recovering from a week of house guests. And that's no offense to any of those house guests if they might be listening. Plus, uh, the Saturday after that, we uh, went to see uh, my wife's cousin and we drank. We drank from like 11 to 11. I mean, it was, uh, yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, I've taken a few days to recover from this. This is what happens when you get older. It's not just a quick coffee and a cigarette and, you know, a bagel from Dunkin' Donuts. It's, it's days. It's days. It's painstaking days. So, but you know what I can celebrate? The New York Yankees are the American League East champions, which I don't mean to poo poo this stuff. I don't mean to be the guy. Oh, Brian, are you ever happy? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm happy they won. Of course, you follow the team all year. You want them to do this, but like, can we stop? Let's not lose our shit over this. Let's the players themselves. They want to celebrate. They did this all year. I'm kind of with that, but like, as fans, am I gonna like go turn on QVC right now and get my division, you know, the AL East champ shirt and uh, wear that proudly? Remember that I used to? I remember there used to be kids like in my class. They'd have it like the next day or like two days later, and it's just like that's not true. These are days before Amazon. They didn't have it the next day. But it was just like, well, how did you get that that quick? Oh, yeah, well, my dad, he knows a guy. Yeah. Well, shit, my dad doesn't know a guy. I, I want 1997 uh, American League East championship shirts. And I want them in that same week just to show off to everyone just to say I, my dad is a guy. Dad, you don't you don't have a guy. But they are uh, they're where they're supposed to be. I'm, I'm happy. You know, 85% of the fans are looking at it probably from the same kind of perspective I am. The other 15 think they won something, think they were on the team, and uh, feel as if they should celebrate with the team. It's, I don't mean to be pessimistic, but if you can drive a car, you should not be tweeting some of the things that I see on Twitter that like, they think they are best. Like, it's like, I don't really have that many friends around here. Only, uh, like Dee Dee, uh, Glaber. Yeah. They're, they're my friends. They're my friends. Like, and, and I know that sounds nuts, but like the way that some of these people talk uh, and I know I've beaten this to death more than, no, 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 not going to do that. And it's that beaten this to death that like, ad nauseum. But you're not on the team. It's just cool. But someone else is not on the team right now, too. That's our old friend, uh, Domingo Herman. Not good. Very bad timing. We got the president tweeting. What's he saying? Oversight hearing at UC statehood planned map could carve out Trump. 
when President Trump took. Okay. I love when Trump just he he que- he, he tweets he he uh, quote tweets other people or retweets what they say. And it's like thanks, Bill. <laughs> it's just like well, I mean, if somebody said it, then it's got to be true. I got not not that important. But Domingo Herman uh, probably, although he's got like a crazy great win loss record. I mean, his ERA is I think it's in the threes, right? High high threes, but still, you know, I mean. It's good, I guess. But, uh, yeah, he might not be with the team any longer this year. He might be um, administrative leave. There seems to be some sort of domestic violence thing going on. And not, not a lot of details. But I'll tell you, man, it is this this generation that, again, want to have sex with the players and uh, think they're on the team. Boy, they are quick to turn on uh, one of their own very quickly with no, no, no details whatsoever. Other than it happened... It, and those and the, and the details that we do have are are differing. One says it's at his home. One says it's at a public thing, and one says the MLB official saw it. One says it was at his home. No one saw it. So a lot, a lot of things. But I mean, boy, you would want Domingo Herman uh, killed, firing squad uh, at the very least. Now I know some of you are saying, well, right, well that sounds like you're some sort of apologist for domestic violence, and I am. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go on record right now. I'm not. I'm not. And by the way, I didn't want to wear blackface. I, I don't, I can't, I won't wear blackface. Um, you know, this, it's called an investigation too, by the way. So <laughs> let's just go through this and see what happens. Now, if he's found to be guilty of something, yeah, yeah, give him the penalty, dude. The penalty, the, the rules are there for a reason. You, you can't do that stuff. But man, oh man. Uh, and then, of course, you know, I've talked about this subject on the podcast many, many a times, the closer. For the uh, Yankees, who, you know, Earl Chapman, who is he? He's an enormous piece of shit. We know that. Yeah, you see some of these people saying, if, he, if, if Domingo Herman is found guilty, you know, the, the, the Peter Pan Twitter people, lo- losers. If, if, if Domingo Herman is found guilty of anything they're accusing him, which we don't even know what it is, um, he should never wear a Yankee uniform ever again. It's just like, hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. Do you have any self-awareness whatsoever? Any, any. But you'll cheer on this guy. It, it, I said to my wife, I said, yes, yeah, so uh, Yankees uh, World Series hopes look in, in jeopardy. And she, you know, I explained it. And I said, you used to see some of the people on Twitter. You know, they're like, I don't think Domingo Herman should ever, you know, ever, ever wear a Yankee jersey again. And she's just like, what about Aroldis Chapman? It's just like, she, the first thing she said, he's just like, what about Aroldis Chapman? Like, my wife, who doesn't even watch the Yankees, I mean, she she hears it when I'm listening to it or watching it, but give me a break. She doesn't know the team inside and out. I mean, yeah, of course, I drag her to a bunch of games, too, but that, 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 relax. But I mean, the first thing she says, and you have the audacity to, to get your fat little fingers and do that shit and put that stuff out there. You know, the, the most classy Yankee ever, other than Derek Jeter, because we all know he's classy, which he's really not. But the other guy who we thought was the classiest and really isn't, Joe DiMaggio. It's, it's, it's fact. Is it fact or is it hearsay? It's pretty well known. He used to beat the hell out of his wife. And it's just like, oh, well, <laughs> hey, come on. Those are the times. Yeah, this is what like Justin Trudeau would say, even though his happened in 2001. So I don't know if you can get away with that one these days. Uh, especially, did he do that after September 11th too? Like, he's like, hey, look at me. I'm an Arab guy. <laughs> Alibaba. Like, he's sitting there with his arm around two guys that do look, uh, I don't mean to say ethnic, but I mean, it, it's in black and white, so you can't really tell, but hey, look at me. <laughs> I was so good lot. Uh, what am I talking about? Uh, what, what, what was I saying? What was I saying? Oh, yeah, Joe DiMaggio was a terrible guy. But that, that's the, the, the laser focus that some of these people have. And I'll tell you, you know, domestic violence is one of these things, especially in sports. Like, I'm not going to go out into society and say, but when it comes to sports, it's definitely something that we um, have done an overcorrection on. Brian, that's disgusting you'd say that. And I don't mean overcorrection on the terms of severity. I mean over, oh, over, oh, bleh, overcorrection on, on how we view it in a sense. Meaning, completely ignored it before. Now, we don't even know the details of what happened to Domingo Herman. You want him off the team and banished. We've got to meet in the middle, people. Let's talk. Let's talk. But hey, if he did it, it's just as bad as as, 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 uh, as Chapman. But <laughs> that doesn't stop teams from signing guys that are good. You know? People say, oh, <laughs> oh yeah? Uh, they got rid of Addison Russell. He did something like that. Yeah, he's in the minors. Addison Russell has put like shit this year. Have you noticed that? Have you, have you seen how bad he's been? That's why he's not on the team. 
You know, uh, Ray Lewis killed somebody. I said this on Twitter. He paid someone. He, okay, he wasn't found guilty. He paid off victims in a murder trial and is still treated as a god to this day. If you are good, you will play. He will take his punishment. He will say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. People will forget. We will move on. That's exactly what will happen. Man, oh man. And I, I, this other tweet I saw, I mean, these people are nuts. I just turned on WFAN. People are talking about how this Herman possible hypothetical suspension may affect the playoff rotation. Just like, it's fucking WFAN. Like, what are you looking for? Like, you looking for Middle East peace talk? Are you looking for, like, the intric intricacies of, like, socioeconomic problems when it comes to domestic violence? It's WFAN. These people can barely dial a phone. Sounds yours truly, of course. Which, <laughs> whenever I say yours truly now, I think of OJ. I just think, hey, Twitter world, yours truly. I just, I think of that all the time now, but other than me, I mean, let's, 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 and maybe Simon from Yonkers and a few other people, but I mean, other than that, they're pretty, pretty much dummies. They, so what, what do we expect them to talk about anyways? But forget even that. It's a sports radio station. It's not NPR. <laughs> Imagine Mike taking a phone call. Mike, don't you think, uh, you know, some of the services that are offered to battered women that just, they're, they're not uh, feasible under this policy and this budget. When, if you go back seven years, it get the hell off the phone. Oh, man. So everyone's quitting on Mike, too. <laughs> the Giants coach said, I don't want to listen. I don't blame him. Do you listen to that horse shit? That, listen, it, it's one thing to be like, D yeah, you're not a good team, you know, but uh, you, know, you got this guy. Mike just has this guy on to just shit on him. Let me see if I can find this from Funhouse. I mean, I hate to say it, but you look like a terrible team. It's the truth. Yeah, I mean, you're not, you're not good at anything. I mean, so you, know, you got a really good running back, uh, and you got a good kicker who missed the field not good goal at yesterday. Anything. Coaches love But other than that. that, you don't look very good at anything. You can't get the ball in the end zone, and you can't stop anybody. That's a hard combination. Well, those are things that we got to work on as we move forward. <laughs> I mean, I hate to say it. I mean, listen, Mike's absolutely right. But I mean, come on. Anyways, back to the Yankees. We'll see what happens. You know, CeCe Sabathia shouldn't be on this playoff roster. The guy stinks. Imagine that that's a weak way to say goodbye, man. You're waving everyone on CC night. You, you pitch three innings. And, uh, you know, after a really subpar year for the most, more than subpar. I mean, there were only a few flashes of brilliance. Uh, just, you know, three innings. Uh, and, and I know, oh, okay, well, we're doing this. We're doing that. We're trying to stretch it. Okay, stop, stop, stop. I don't want to hear that shit. That, that's an ugly look. Shouldn't be on this playoff roster because he stinks. And the whole, like, getting mad about bunts. Grow up, dude. No, no one is impressed by that. I find that very unappealing. I, I don't find anything interesting about that, that your fat ass can't go and get a bunt. If I were on that team, if I were the manager, that I tell that team to bunt every single goddamn time. Even if the catcher ended up getting the ball and CeCe never moved every single time just to stick it in that. I, I like CeCe, but that is such shit. Oh, don't bunt on me. It would also be the longest walk ever from the bullpen if he was on that team. He would need the bullpen car. You'd need that. His, it's, seriously, how long would that take? He's not going to run. He'd hurt himself. I mean, that, he, he, can't get, he can't get down for a bunt or cover first base. You think he's going to trot in from the outfield? I don't think so. And you see Judge is a bit banged up. Merith Morakovich asking him ridiculous questions, saying, oh, does it ever get old with all the champagne? It's like Aaron Boone's been in the league for, what, three years and uh, has never been to a World Series, which I, I, I get it. It's tough, but, like, can we stop the stupid questions like that? Does it ever get old? Maybe if you didn't block me on all social media, I could show you how to do an interview. Oh, my God, Jesus. Anyways, uh... I don't know what to think now. I mean, Herman, that's a, that's a major issue. The the batting is still, you know, you don't know what's up with Sanchez. You know, Carnacion, we don't know what he is. Stanton, you know, Stanton's back. And, you know, the Stanton Sinkovitz. Boy, they, they should have their own T-shirts made up for these guys. You know, all I said on Twitter was that, you know, I'm supposed to be really excited about Stanton. He's such a great player. I'm just like, whatever. You know, he's he's here. Again, people taking this shit way too seriously, way too seriously. Such, such losers. I, 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 whatever. I mean, who knows what he'll be? Granted, he had a bad. It's one year he can he can uh, eh, improve his statistics in the postseason. Like, off of last year, it wouldn't be hard. Put it this way: I was a lot more optimistic before Demio Herman got uh, popped in an investigation uh, about the Yankees. The Yankees, uh, you know, postseason shot. Now we got to, I mean, either way, what happened with Herman, you got you, you have to now put your faith in Paxton, which listen, he's pay, played great. Not a lot of pressure in these games. Not a lot of pressure at all. You know, early season, the guy struggled. Oh, he was hurt then. Shut up. Maybe he was, but we'll, we'll see what happens in the playoffs. I don't have a ton. I, 
I don't have full faith in him. I certainly don't. He hasn't shown me anything. He doesn't show me something. You know, jackass on the couch or who listens to my external speaker on the radio. Yeah, yeah. Show me something, millionaire. I become so fucking jaded. <laughs> you know, it's social media. You know, I used to like sports. I mean, I was younger too, but I don't know. Some, some of these people, I think they, do they just go for brownie points with the Peter Pan loser crowd? Like who can be more like ridiculous? Anyways. Ah, mother. Anyways, I'm drinking a Swamp Ape beer from the Florida Beer Company. It's not very good, but it is 10% alcohol, which is a little higher than what I like to, to drink. Uh, my parents got me a, you know, a beer of the month thing uh, for my birthday. So just got that in yesterday. It was going no booze, but I said, I got to try one of these. Yeah, start with the double IPA, right? <laughs> um, so that's that. So that's the Yankees. What are you going to do? I see football. Actually, not true. I've seen like a minute of football. I've seen Antonio Brown lose his mind. Now he's with the Patriots. Uh, I saw that he, I saw that he, I didn't actually, I can't believe I didn't actually read the article on this, but I just saw the headline that he bragged that he farted in his doctor's face, which immediately I saw that. And I don't know if I've told this story before, but I was accused of something like that in high school uh, by my gym teacher. And he was a substitute gym teacher who was total lame uh, Just He was ripe for the picking of high school students to be mocked and uh, just mutilated with insults and just, yeah. So he was bending over to tie his shoe once and I just like lifted my leg as if I was farting and then like waved it. But, like, listen, I did everything but fart and I get it. And any person that saw that, I mean, unless they were like, I mean, he should have known he didn't smell anything, but regardless, it gave off the vibe that I did that in his face, whether I did it or not. And it's so disrespectful, but uh, I thought it was fine. Um, <laughs> he called my mom and she's like, he's farting in gym class. My mom's like, tell him to stop. <laughs> um, but that made me think of that. So uh, I was, I was 15 though. <laughs> Antonio Brown's a bit older. I was probably more sane at that point than he is now. He's, he's lost his mind. Or is he just with the Patriots and that was the whole scheme all along? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? See, Beckham had a great game against the Jets. Uh, I mean, yeah, he's spending all his time fighting with defensive coordinators. I just, I don't get Beckham sometimes. He, he, he picks the wrong battles. Like, you want to get angry at someone? Get, get, I guess that's not true. He, but you know what? He, do it to the opponent you're going to play like that week. Then, then it's more interesting. Win games. I know Eli is. Now, Eli, the Eli era is probably over unless. There's a weird phrase from the coach the other day. He goes, yeah, hey, we're only an ankle injury away from Daniel Jones from having Eli Manning back as a starter. It's like, why, why are you wishing specific ankle injuries on your players? That's a really odd strategy when you don't have a very good record and they probably don't have a ton of faith in you. But I've watched zero NFL. I don't, I don't know. I'm doing things, but at the same time... I'll be sitting, I, one Sunday I was sitting there and I just said, I don't, know, I don't wanna, but the thrill is gone. I know, I know. It's just, whatever. But, uh, as I open the show with, um, <laughs> blackface, you know, the, these, the, the Virginia governor and other people, they're like old and they're from the South. I'm not saying what they did was right, but the culture certainly was different, like the 50s and the 60s in the South, as opposed to 2001, when you've been sipping from a silver spoon your whole goddamn life as you're the son of the prime minister or president or whatever. Whatever way that goddamn country does, these colors don't run. Let me get back to that for a second. I saw a tweet today that said that Pete Buttigieg wants to protest Chick-fil-A on this Sunday, and it had no link. It had... No check mark from the per from the from the place on Twitter, and it had no. It actually said in the bio it was satire. The amount of people that responded to it, thinking it was real, was shocking. Not, not I I looked at the comments to see, waiting to see some people be like, "Hey guys, this is fake. It's a satire thing. Come on, this isn't real. Where's the link? You know, things like that. Nothing. All those people believed that. That is that shows you. You know, do I think Donald Trump had anything to do with the votes being cast by the, by, you know, by, by the people in the United States? No, I don't. I think the people that voted, voted the way they wanted to. I don't think anything was altered. Now, do I think he conspired with Russia in some way? Maybe not him, but I mean, come on. I, I think there's certainly a connection. And 
the what the Russians did in terms of these bots on Facebook and just to spread this misinformation and both sides do it. Like, I, I don't want to play games here. I mean, I could probably look up a ton of liberal leaning stuff that is completely false or just relies on a headline from some website that barely exists. It doesn't really exist. It was just made up. They're all there. I'm just saying the manipulation is scary. How stupid people are. The majority of people that you walk through in life, walk next to look at are stupid, stupid people. Very stupid. Um, but what was I going to say? Okay, back to Justin Trudeau. That dude has probably met the most diverse group of people you've ever seen in your life. People from all different countries. And of course, his father might be Fidel Castro. Look up the similarities. Just put the names in. I mean, come on. He, yeah, let's, let's be honest. But the idea that he would think that's right in 2001. I just, I've just never really, I, mean, I was a kid before. I've never really had the 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 uh the urge you know to really want to say hey we don't that let's like make a movie uh i don't know i'll play fucking i don't know i'll play i'll play will smith you know you got any like shoe polish you could just put on like that's cool right like to urge to do it i just hey to each his own i mean you're, you're gonna get criticism i mean it's, it's a risky move and not just in this climate but in any climate it's probably going forward i'd say blackface is risky you're a real risk taker if you uh, if you do that, but it'll be interesting to see what happens with Justin Trudeau because I mean his popularity is kind of hanging by a thread uh, in Canada. He hasn't been the best prime minister. Now in our country, you won't hear that because one, he's good looking, and two, he doesn't like Trump. So basically, he might be the greatest world leader in the history of the world in a lot of people's eyes. I mean that's all you need. That's the recipe. There are some people, I mean, and I know most of you know I'm joking. There are some people that probably think that, though. There are tons of people that think that. Oh, too bad we don't have a president like him. Why? What do you, what do you, what do you like about him? Oh, I mean, you know, but he told that orange Cheeto. Oh, what did he say? He said he didn't like, okay, I mean, I don't need to go through this whole hypothetical where I move closer and farther away from the microphone, but you understand exactly the dialogue with these dim-witted morons that, that would, that would, you could, you probably know a dim-witted moron in your life that you can insert in that part right there. And that would be that person, either at home, either at work, wherever they exist in your life. And you know it, I'm sorry, you know it, but I want to see how he gets out of this. He's going to. I mean, just keep apologizing to death, apologizing to death. Keep doing it. People want you to fall on your sword. All right. They want you to fall on your sword. They want you to, they want you to grovel. They want your approval and we, they want you to ask for their approval. Now that's, that's what it is. You got to do it. I think he'll be fine though. And honestly, he, he, all I saw on CNN, it just said, Justin Trudeau does not know how many times he wore blackface, which is insane in the first place. And like these, the sweat dripping from his breast. He's just like, Oh God. Like you should see, it's just like two long, sh like rivers, like dual rivers coming from where his breasts are down his shirt of just sweat. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, Brian, we get it. But finally, you know, we'll, we'll end on, uh, another, uh, just like a similar kind of, kind of, you know, are we going to cancel people? This cancel culture? SNL is a show that is irrelevant. I get it. the only thing that's irrelevant. The only thing that's ever relevant with SNL is if someone is leaving the show or someone comes on the show. That that's that's all that matters. Nothing on that show is funny anymore. And I'd like to. I mean, it, I know all. I was gonna say I'd like to see their ratings compared to before, but all ratings are down. Obviously, as time goes on with more outlets for 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 information and, and entertainment. But man, oh man, it shows a hunky piece of shit, huh? Hunky. I didn't mean it that way. <laughs> Whatever. Hunky. So Shane Gilbert is uh, a comedian that they, they just hired some Asian comedian too, which I guess they'd never done before. So they got shit for that. Um, actually, you know what? Before I do this, I wanted to talk about the, the no, I was going to talk about the debates, but really what, what was interesting in the debates? No one really won. No one really lost. Um, you know, Biden's playing record players. You know, you got the whole deal, the, the memes and the, the, everything on Twitter. You got it. No, nothing really stuck out to me. Yeah, no, nothing, nothing really, whatever. So yeah, Shane Gilbert was hired for SNL. Hasn't, hasn't been any, they're great sketch comedy, but uh, a, a podcast uh, arose where he was using derogatory comments for towards Asian people. And I listened to it and it was really, it was kind of just like stupid. It was just unnecessary. It wasn't even like a punchline or anything like that. It was just like, yeah, you, dude, you didn't really have to like say that there. It's now. 
Shane Gilbert has no excuse. Like all these people were talking about, oh, well, they don't know. They didn't know this. We overcorrection here. It's 2000 whatever, dude. I, 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 he's a young guy, so I don't know what year it was. But uh, whatever the year is, you're not going to use that word. So th- there's no excuse for that. So if you're SNL, which you want to push sometimes the comedic boundaries. I think that's what's made the show great in the years. 2019, I understand. They'll probably be firebombed by, uh, you know, I don't know. Request to fire about from Twitter because people on Twitter aren't actually proactive. They just say they're going to be. Hence the 2016 election. But anyways, um, oh, but psh, the uh, get to the point, Brent. So before he does a, a skit, he's fired by SNL. Now, I kind of disagree with it, but I understand at the same time why your SNL, why you might do it just because everyone, everyone is so petrified of everything. And the idea that this 20% of the population can make your life a living hell for a few days and then forget when Taylor Swift does something tomorrow, which she's really into politics too. I, at first, I thought she had a brain. Those comments that she had about politics, like, I, I, I mean, put it this way. I, I didn't think she was like, you know, some sort of brainiac or anything, but I'm just, I thought there was a little more to her than the comment she made about how she's really into politics now. There's literally nothing worse than white supremacy. I mean, that it's pretty bad, but I mean, I could think of some things worse. It's repulsive. Okay. There should be no place for it. Really. I keep trying to learn as much as I can about politics, and it's something I'm becoming obsessed with, whereas before I was living in this sort of political ambivalence because the person I always had voted, voted for had always won. I wonder if she's ever voted in her life. Let's be, let's, let's be completely fair. Swift never takes a side in the Democratic presidential primary. She doesn't even mention any of the Demo- Democratic candidates by name, but she does put forward the idea that Democrats should stick together, whoever the candidate is. This is a quote. I do think as a party, we need to be more of a team. Yeah. We're the Republicans. If you're wearing that red hat, you're one of them. And if we're going to do anything to change what's happening, we need to stick together. I, this, this is, is this Taylor Swift or is this George Washington? I, I can't tell. It's so good. We need to stop dissecting why someone's on our side or if they're on our side in the right way or if they phrased it correctly. We, ooh, so let's, ooh, let's dissect that a minute. We need to stop dissecting why someone's on our side or if they're on our side in the right way or if they phrased it correctly. What does that mean? Is that some sort of gender neutral uh, things that she's ref- that she's saying? Hey, enough of this garbage! Ooh, I'm just I'm just uh, being rabble rouser. We need to not have the right. We need to not have the right kind of Democrat and the wrong kind of Democrat. We need to just be like, you're a Democrat. Sick. Get in the car. We're going to the mall. Yep. I mean, doesn't get more. I mean, I can see why she's she's learned so much, so I can understand why she's so obsessed with politics. I mean, when you come away with that, boy, what a pandering loser. I never thought anything of her and just like, okay, she's a star. I don't understand why she's so much popular, more popular than everyone else. I mean, she's pretty, but I mean, it's not like doesn't blow you away. I just didn't understand why she ever stood out from any other garbage singers, but okay. So let's get to the Shane Gilbert's third try. What, what, I, well, I don't, you know, while I disagree with SNL, I understand why they did it, but that Shane Gilbert thing was, just the latest example, and it was really weird. It, it seemed like really bad this time of people not just wanting to get their way, but like sit there and salivate, pitching a tent, watching someone's life get ruined. Now, I'm not trying to say it wasn't a big deal. Di- Listen, again, SNL wants to farm their, their, their place, man. But I mean, you push edgy comedy. You just, you know, just, just thinking you know, maybe it'd be a interesting redemption story of sorts. But if you want to fire him, that's fine. You, you get to do what you do. But these people dancing on the grave of someone, man, oh man, especially in this world where you can find anything on anybody, if you really want to, if you want to be a super sleuth, you want to be a detective and try to dig up shit on somebody, I'm sure you probably can, you know, I'm sure you probably can find it and make them look real bad. So I don't know the people live in glass houses. It's just weird obsession. It was kind of funny. He said too, he goes, <laughs> He said, I just, uh, he, I guess he did some stand-up recently. He's like, I just read all of your death threats in an Asian voice. I just wanted to let you know that. But he's meeting with a- Andrew Yang, too. I love when you have to meet with people. Imagine, is there an actual meeting? Like, like, like Imus had to meet with Al Sharpton, and, and let's say he's going to meet with Yang. So, like, do they sit down? Does, like, Sharpton say, welcome, Don. You understood what you said was wrong, and it was a bad word, and you shouldn't have said it. Yes, I do, uh, uh, Reverend. Uh, uh, I do. Uh, uh. Uh, yes, 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 I do. That's a terrible Don Imus impression. 
now let's let's open your books and you know i mean is there like an actual like sermon about this or is it like all right this is the pr strategy i'm gonna say this you're gonna say that we're gonna get this you're gonna be part of this you know is it that is it like we're gonna take photo ops here we're gonna appear at this dinner like is it more of that always interests me a sit down like, we're, we're gonna talk about the bad word you said and why i was offended <laughs> funny funny world we live in so that is the podcast ladies and gentlemen i am back uh let's see We'll wait for a caller to bring it up before. Da, 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 da. And I'm just trying to see if there's anything here. We'll see what uh we'll see what happens with the Yankees though. I am a little worried. We still have another what week and a half week before the playoffs start, anyways. But we'll see what happens. Well, we'll know probably by the time we do this next podcast, we'll know about Herman. So we'll say everyone will hate him. And the Yankees, I mean, he is young. He is cheap. The Yankees would be unless he killed someone, which you know. I guess that that's where the Yankees draw the line is murder because they do not involve Jim Lyrits in anything. So, yeah. Um, unless that's the case, then yeah. Um, they're going to resign him. And it sucks about the Patances too. That was another thing, by the way. You know, I'm sorry on a personal level about Dylan Patances, but like, there are some people, again, they, they, they say these things that I, I, I kind of want to lose my mind. Just like, we're going to do it for Dylan. Hashtag win 28 for Dylan. It's just like, Again, you own a driver's license. If you, are, if you are old enough to have a driver's license, you should not be tweeting things like that out. Or, or, or you really need to do a lot of soul searching. That, that's just this is my, my advice. Maybe I need to do some too. I'm the one that started the show saying I want to wear blackface. So maybe we all need to do our own soul searching in our own ways, right? Oh, boy. Uh, listen to the show, iTunes, TuneIn, Radio, Stitcher, Google Play, YouTube, Spotify, Podbean. Follow me on Twitter at BrianBuck13 and at RedTicketBlues. So everyone enjoy your weekend. Um, Ooh, are we, uh, do clocks go back this weekend? No. I just know that the season changes, right? The clocks don't go back. When's, when do the clocks go? You guys will figure this out. You don't need me. So, uh, thanks for listening. Good to talk to all of you. And with all that being said, I'm out here. I don't mind you coming here. Wasting.